There are really only three ways to grow a business. And most of us sit around, we wish we had a bigger business. We wish we made more money this month. We wish, we wish, we wish. But have we been pulling on the three business levers that are actually gonna grow your income this month? When we break it down into a one page or less formula, it makes it really simple to determine exactly what actions we need to take to grow our business this month. So no matter what industry you're in, no matter what you do or what kind of business you have, we can pull on this lever and grow our income. That's what we're gonna do today. Let's get into it. I read a quote recently about simplicity and it's about, it requires genius to turn the complex into simple. And usually the masters of a market, the people who have been in there longest, break things down into the most basic form and they're more focused on the fundamentals than anyone. You can see this in the internet marketing industry across the board. Beginners are obsessed with complex tactics. The follow-up sequence, the automations, what kind of software they're using. Well, the masters are focused on the fundamentals, like their offer, like their customer, like solving problems. And so anytime we want to try and improve our business, it's best if we can break things down into a simple format and then determine what we actually need to do to grow our revenue this month. So that's what we're gonna do today. A couple of years ago, I learned about the three ways to grow a business. I think from Jay Abraham, and he's one of those guys who's been in the market so long, he really does have it broken down into its simplest form. And when you hear some of the stuff, you think, yeah, that's common sense, but common sense is not common practice. And the difference between an amateur and a master is actually keeping the focus on that common sense, on those simple fundamentals that can move the needle. So today we're gonna to get into three ways to grow your business this month and how to actually move the needle on those three things. So there's really only three ways for you to grow your business right now. Number one, you can get more customers. Seems obvious, right? Number two is you can charge more for your services. And number three is you can keep those customers longer. So keep them coming back, paying over and over again. So number one is the one that most people struggle with. And I think most people struggle with this because they don't understand that prospecting and getting the attention of your customer is a habit of the business. Just like you brush your teeth every single day, you have to prospect for customers every day. You don't brush your teeth last night and then you go to bed this evening and your spouse says, honey, aren't you gonna brush your teeth? And you say, oh no, I already did it last night. Or I did it last night and my teeth didn't stay clean, so it didn't work. That's what most people do with prospecting, right? They do it once and then they stop doing it and they say prospecting doesn't work, when in reality, they just need to brush their teeth again. And so this is a fundamental business activity. I always try to harp on this is that businesses have fundamental activities that must occur consistently over time or else you don't have a business. And the most important one starting out is prospecting because that's the engine that fuels everything else. That's what brings in the cash to support your team and your product and solving problems for your customers. So if you wanna get more customers this month, the first thing you can do is just up your level of prospecting. That means reach out to more people. Now there's a number of ways to do this, but I recommend you doing that sustainable for you. That's the number one factor. Cause a lot of people get really excited and they go out there and they say, I'm gonna crush it with prospecting this month. And they go hard on day one. They really do. They reach out to more people than they've ever reached out to. Day two, they lose a little enthusiasm. By day three, they've quit. You can't do something for three days in business and give up and expect to have any sort of results. So if you're the person who just abhors prospecting and you don't wanna do it, there are two options I recommend. Number one is hire someone who is aggressive to prospect for you and pay them on commission. There are certain individuals out there who have a personality type where they just want to go hunt and they will go hunt for customers for you, especially if they are incentivized for each additional customer they bring in. So if you hate prospecting, hire a commission only prospector. It's no money out of your pocket. You only pay them when they bring in customers. The second option I have for you on there, the easiest way to do more prospecting is learn advertising. Advertising is not like manual prospecting where if you want to quadruple your prospecting today, you have to spend four times as much time going out there and reaching out to your market. 
No, I can simply click a button in the morning, change the budget on my ad campaign, and spend four times as much. All of a sudden, I've done four times as much prospecting today. Now, the catch here with digital advertising is you actually have to get good at it, right? If you're not good at prospecting and turning that attention into money, you're going to lose money on ads. But if you take the time to master advertising, then when you want to do more prospecting and bring in more customers and you have a great conversion process in place, it's push button, right? Push the button, four times more prospecting, we're bringing in more customers. You get a, an offer that hits in the market and you can just explode this thing with a couple clicks on your computer. It's really quite amazing. So that's number one. If you wanna make more money this month, bring in new customers, more than last month. That's pretty obvious, right? Duh. Again, easiest way to do it is to just up your prospecting. If you're already selling something successfully, just do more of what you're already doing. Now, if you are not bringing in any customers, you got to go back to the drawing board, start at square one and find an offer that the market actually wants and then do more prospecting. Number two is charge more per customer. This one gets a lot of people. People freak out. They think their market isn't going to pay. They're worried that if they charge more, the competition is going to beat them. These people are in a race to the bottom. Now, uh, profound piece of wisdom that I learned is it's not really what you do, it's who you do it for. As an example, let's think of the amount of energy that is required to take someone from brand new to making their first $10,000 online. This person doesn't have proper work habits, they never worked from home before, they don't know what the internet is some of the time, and we're going to try to take them from basically starting from scratch, think about a stopped train, to moving full speed, zero to $10,000. That's gonna take a lot of pushing, a lot of effort to bring that up to momentum, right? There's so many skills, so many things we have to put into place. That's gonna take a lot of effort and we can charge a certain amount for that result, but it's a monumental feat to actually get the customer that result. Now, let's say that we want to help a company that's already making a million dollars a year make an extra 10 grand. How easy is that gonna be? They already have a sales process in place. They already have budgets to pay for outside help. They have customers that already know their brand. And we can make literally one small tweak to an advertising campaign or even a setting in their ads dashboard and improve the margins on their ads. And we can bring in an extra $10,000 for them, no problem. So which of those do you think is gonna be easier to charge a higher price for? Because in that second example, we might not just bring in $10,000, we might bring in an extra $100,000, and then we can charge $10,000 for that. For the beginner who is not used to spending on money online, and it's a monumental feat to get them to actually change their habits and their lifestyle, we can't charge nearly as much. So the number one thing you have to focus on if you want to charge more per customer is not always necessarily what you're offering. It's who you're offering it to. So just go out there and offer your services or your product, somebody who is who you can make a bigger difference for with less effort and get the result a lot quicker without them changing their current behavior. And you're gonna be able to charge so much more for that service. So we always teach people, you know, pouring advertising on a failing business is just gonna make the business fail faster. But if the business already works on its own without the advertising, we pour advertising on top, it's like pouring gasoline on the fire. So that second one, work with clients who are already successful without you, you can charge so much more for that service. And number three, keep your customers longer. Seems obvious again, right? But if we can get our customers to pay us over and over again, then we're gonna make more money in our business. And we've already paid the money to acquire those customers. So most of the time a business's biggest expense, especially in the digital space, is customer acquisition costs. Now, if we're selling to our existing customer base or we're just charging our clients every single month, there's no customer acquisition cost after we brought them in the first time. And so there's so much more profit involved in those customers. So the way that you do this is you focus on customer experience. Number one, what does customer success looks like, look like? Because customer success looks different to everybody. And so you want to figure out what does success look like to your market? And do they recognize success when they see it? Because if you're getting your client great results, but they don't understand that, or you're not using reporting to communicate to them that they're getting great results, they might not even know that they're getting results. And so we have to define what success looks like to them. Is that a 10% increase in sales? Is that just that they have more leads? Is that they don't have to employ 
a manual prospector in their business? What does that success look like? And then let's make sure we report on that success to them at regular intervals. Don't make the client feel neglected. Don't make them wonder if you're getting them results or not. That's the easiest way to keep them longer. Uh, number two is obviously we have to get them great results. What result did we promise? And let's see if we can get them there faster, easier, with less effort on their part, and they're going to want to keep paying us. So that all seems pretty obvious. The next thing we want to do is always be solving problems. So we might solve the first problem for our customer, but usually when we solve the first problem, that creates a new problem. So once we've solved a problem for our customer, what new problem has been created for them? And then let's see if we can go in there and solve that problem for them as well. That's usually the easiest thing to sell to your customers after they've come into the business initially is the solution to whatever problem was created when they got the result that you initially promised them. So in WFA, we promise people to teach them digital advertising and how to go out there and get their first paying client. Now, what happens when people start to get too many clients? They get really busy and they need help. So what problem is created? They need to know how to go out there in the marketplace and get help in their business, whether that means outsourcing some of the tasks they do, uh, finding freelancers or 1099 contractors or actually bringing people onto the team. So do you think that might be an easy offer to sell our audience because we just promised them result, they got the result, they have a new problem, they're looking for a new solution. So to keep your customers longer, again, proper reporting, define what customer success looks like, make sure you actually deliver on your initial promise, and then solve future problems, the problems that are created once you get the result that you promised in the first place. So if you're looking to grow your business this month, if you want to have a record month in your business, there are three things that you should focus on immediately. This is a high level overview. Obviously there's a mi million things we could focus on in business, but again, simplicity is king when it comes to getting results. So let's focus on bringing in more customers by ramping up our prospecting. We can do that by putting in more hours, hiring more people, or mastering digital advertising to bring in clients using systems. Number two, we can charge more per customer. Again, that's largely about client selection. Let's work with clients who are already close to the whole. Let's work with clients who we can go out there and we get an amazing result for without major changes in their business model or their behavior. That's gonna be so much easier to charge for, okay? Let's set ourselves up for success and avoid working with people who are gonna fail without your help. If they're gonna succeed with or without you, we can often just pour gasoline on the flames, get them a much better result. That's gonna be easy for us, easier for them, and we can charge much more money. Again, when it comes to a digital advertising agency, this is mostly working with bigger clients. Okay. You can help them just using the same amount of work as you help small clients, but you're going to get so much better results because they're already good at conversion. They're already good at sales. They're already good at lifetime value. And then number three on our list is the lifetime value of your customer. Define what success looks like to your customer. Focus on getting that result for them and proper reporting so they know they've gotten that result and then always be solving problems. What problems come, comes next for your customer? And let's see if we can turn that into a new offer and offer it to the customer after we got them the first result. I hope this helps. If you're looking to grow your business this month, go out and give it a shot. Put in the comments, what are you going to do this month to grow your business? And which one of these things do you think would give you the most leverage? the highest return on your time and your money right now. I'd love to hear in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit notifications so you never miss a video. That's all for today. It's Christian, the Work From Anywhere digital marketing guy. See you on the next one.